So today we'll be going over internal forces and what that essentially means are whenever we're analyzing a structure with external forces being applied, internal forces are developed within the beams themselves and it's very important to analyze and to be able to come up with the values of the internal force to be able to determine if that structure will be able to either either hold up the, the external forces or if it will fail ultimately. So, for example, we have this um, hanging beam here, and we have the external forces P1 and P2 being applied. So when it comes to solving this, of course, the first step is to find your reactionary forces at support A. So in this case, we see we're, we're going to have a, a moment that's caused by these forces. So in the reaction, we're going to have a moment equal and opposite. Let's call it MA. And we have forces going downward, so we're going to have another reactionary moment along the y direction. Let's call it AY. And in this case, we actually have one at an angle, so we'll have also a horizontal um, external force. So the reaction will have going one to the horizontal equal and opposite to that A. X. So this is the first step to find the reactionary um, forces of the supports. And when it comes to finding the internal forces in this case, let's go ahead and get the what internal forces are developed within this section of the beam section. AA, let's call it point B. So this is where we do very similar to the method of sections where we go ahead and cut up the member into two separate parts. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now we went ahead and drew the the beam in its two separate um, parts. Now we, I went ahead and drew the reactionary forces, right? We have AY, AX, and the moment at A point A here and this is going to be point B. Now here are the internal forces that are developed within the beam and this is the common um, convention that we draw it. So when it comes to this part we have a normal force that's perpendicular to that cross-sectional area we call it N at point B so N B. We also have a shear force that's developed within the beam itself and we denote that as V, a shear force at B, V beam. And we also have a bending moment in that beam itself. And we draw it counterclockwise and M beam. Now, when you go ahead and draw these internal forces on the other section of the beam, they're going to be equal and opposite. So the normal force is equal and opposite and B the shear instead of going downward is going to go up so V B and the moment of course is the opposite in this case clockwise and B and these are the internal forces that are developed within the beam once you have external forces acting upon it and of course you do your regular um, static equilibrium equations to solve for these unknowns when it comes to a normal force the shear force as well as the bending moment within the beam itself so let's go ahead and do uh, a problem so for this problem statement we have determine the shear force and moment at point C and D. So here we have a beam with its supports, we have a roller and we have a hinge and we have the external forces being applied 500 pounds, 200 and 300 pounds and we have all the, the dimensions here, the locations. Um, so now the first step always is find the support reactions. So let's go ahead and do that. So we start off by drawing the free body diagram with its um, the reactions at each of the supports. So we have at point B, we have a hinge. So we have a, a force along the X and the Y along the Y direction. And at A, we have a roller. So we just have a normal force, A, Y. So let's go ahead and apply the sum of moments about point B. So for the re reaction at point A, we have negative A, Y times 14 feet. Of course, remember it's negative because it's um, the moment being caused with respect to point B is clockwise plus we have the external force 500 pounds times the perpendicular length which is 8 feet this is positive 
the 200 pound since it's going right directly um, to the point B it's not causing any rotation here so that doesn't produce any moment and we have the 300 pound external force and it's going to in the clockwise so it's negative 300 times 8 feet so let's go ahead and solve for a y here so we have a y equal to 114 point three pounds so let's go ahead and then do the sum of forces along the y direction and the sum of forces along the x so the forces along the x direction you see we only have bx so bx is equal to zero meaning we don't ha really have an x component uh, for the reaction at point b now let's go ahead and do a sum of forces along the y so positive is up, we have 114.3, take away 500, take away 200, take away 300 plus BY, which gives us BY equal to 885.7 pounds. So here are finally our reaction um, forces. Now let's go ahead and draw section C and um, find the internal forces. So now looking at point C, this is where we go ahead and split up this beam into its two sections. We have the left section of point C. We have this reactionary force that we just solved, the external force 500. And on the right side of the beam, we have the rest of the reactionary at point B and the external forces. Now you can actually um, decide either or section to go ahead and draw these internal forces and solve accordingly. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose the left hand side because there's less forces here to deal with than the right hand side but you could actually use either section to solve for those internal forces so the convention that we have is that normal force at point C we have the shear force going downward here VC and we have a bending moment in that beam so M C. So the same, since I decided to go with this one, let's go ahead and apply the static equilibrium equations to this and solve for these unknown forces. So let's start off with the easiest. The sum of forces along the x direction is equal to zero. We see we only have one force along the x, which is NC, which gives us our answer. Our normal force here, internal normal force, is zero for NC. Now we could go ahead and do the sum of forces along the y direction. So we have the 114.3 pounds um, going in the positive direction, minus 500 pounds, minus VC, which is equal to zero. And we solve for VC, which is negative 385.7 pounds, which means we assumed it to be in the wrong direction. So 385.7 pounds. And the shear force is actually going upward for this internal force. So there's our shear force. Now let's apply the sum of moments with respect to point C. So we have the moment itself, MC, which is what we're trying to solve with respect to point C. And we have the 500 pounds causing a positive moment, so 500 times the perpendicular perpendicular distance to C, which is 4 feet, and the reactionary force, 114.3 pounds, is causing a negative moment in the clockwise direction, so it's 114 times the 10 feet. Now let's go ahead and solve for MC. So we get negative 857 pound feet um, for the moment, which basically tells us it's actually going clockwise here. So now with these internal forces, we have the bending moment as well as the shear force. We're actually able to determine whether this beam will be able to sustain the load or whether it will fail. Now this is, this is something you'll learn once it comes to strengths of materials when it comes to analyzing whether uh, certain structures will fail and so forth. So now on to analyzing the shear and moment um, at point D. So now for section D, as previously mentioned, you could actually decide to do either or, to analyze either or portion of that section, either the right side or the left side. Now, um, on the right side, you see we only have one force being applied, so it's going to be a lot simpler, a lot less time consuming to, to solve using this segment. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the normal force at point D, 
we have the shear. Remember, the common convection conven convention is to draw it upwards here. V, D, and the moment at D is clockwise. M, D. So now we just analyze this free body diagram to solve for all the forces. Now you can see along the x direction we don't have any forces, so we could already tell n d is equal to zero. Now for the sum of forces along the y direction, we have the shear force d and the 300 pounds here. So v d is equal to 300 pounds of shear force. And now when it comes to the moment, um, let's go ahead and do the sum of moments. So the sum of moments with respect to point D counterclockwise is positive. We see that with using the regular sign convention, uh, MD is negative here. And the moment caused by the 300 pounds is also clockwise, so it's going to be negative 300 pounds times the perpendicular distance to D, which is 2 feet, and which gives us MD equal to negative 600 pound feet, um, which basically tells us the moment is opposite of what we assume. So it's actually, instead of going clockwise, it's actually counterclockwise. And here are your... Here is your moment and your shear. So this is how you go about solving for the internal forces developed in the structures in which we have external forces being applied. And this is very useful when you're taking your strengths of materials course. You Having these shear and moment values, you'll be able to determine whether the part will be able to sustain that load or whether it's going to fail. And so that's why being able to solve for internal forces is very important.